After that big rant of building stuff for our users, it's time that we actually do that. So let's go ahead and open up our Sublime Text and jump into views.py inside of the products app, not inside of the main configuration app, but inside of the products app here. I'm gonna go ahead and just make a huge leap and we're gonna be using Django views or generic views. So from Django.views import list view. And we're gonna also do from dot models import product. I'm gonna show you a class-based view first and then a function-based view to see the difference between them. Um, this is actually fairly important because function-based views are super easy as we've already seen. Class-based views get a little bit more complicated, but they're totally doable. So let's make our class-based view and I'll just say product list view and it inherits from list view. And we do a query set of product.objects.all. This is how you make a query set. The model name dot objects dot all. That's how you make a query set. Of course, this is not filtered or scaled down or anything. It's getting literally everything in the database. But that's all you have to do for the view right there. That's it, nothing else. Now, how do you make a function-based view with the same sort of idea? Well, you're gonna do something more like define product list view. And it takes in a request, if you remember back, and then we're gonna return render request a template, so let's say for instance, we did product slash product list view dot HTML, and then some context which we have to add. So we'll say context equals to, and I'll do object list. There's a reason I'm doing it this way, I promise. Object list equals to a query set, and that query set could be literally the same thing. So, so these are roughly the same. Notice in two lines, I'm accomplishing the same I do in like five. That's where list views or class-based views get to be very, very robust. But as we go forward, I'm gonna be showing you these two things side by side, at least in this app, so you can really see the difference between these two and how you can work with them. Now, again, function-based views are gonna be a lot easier. So if, if it's easier for you to understand this at first, master function based views and go with that. Okay, so I've created these two views. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add them to my URLs. So inside of viewers.py, I have to import those URLs. So right above here, I'm gonna do from products.views, import, and we wanna import our product list view. And we also wanna import our other product list view. Okay. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy uh, the about page and just come underneath here and do product twice. So I'll say products and then products dash FBV as in function based view. So with class based views, it is written as a class. So we come in here and just do dot as underscore view because you need it to be a callable item. I'll show you the error that happens if it's not callable in a moment. And then for our products FBV, we've got our product list view here. So we're gonna save that and I'm gonna jump in to that. So let's go to the first one, which was products. Let's make sure our server is running. Uh, we have an import error. Import errors, cannot import name list view. What a great learning moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and I'll say Django cannot import list view. Ba ba ba, can't figure out what's going on here. So I'll just say Django list view. Oh, generic display views. Click jump to list view. I'm gonna click on that. And what do you know? I have my import incorrect. So here is the entire import. It's right up there, so django.views, generic.list.listview. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and jump back into my views. And I'll do from django.views.generic.list.listview. Now, 
I actually know that there's a little bit of a shortcut that I can get rid of list and just do import list view. And I'll comment that out, save it. What do you know? The errors go away. That is how you diagnose errors. Now you could have actually found the, the solution from Stack Overflow this way, um, but you will run into these things. I promise you, I just did it. I've done this for years and I forgot to add generic or maybe I didn't forget so you could learn. Okay, so let's go back to our products. I refresh in here. Of course, product template does not exist. Okay, um, oops, let's change this template to being the same name as this one. I'm gonna copy that and boom, same template names. Okay, so with the list view, it already has a template. So it's almost like saying, hey, template name equals to that. Actually, that's exactly what it's saying. So if I change this to being list, I refresh in here, it says it can't find list or the default. It can't find either one. Well, we haven't made it, but I'm just kind of showing you what we're doing here and why this is important. I'm actually gonna leave it in as list.html. So something that's cool that you can do is, yeah, you can make these templates inside of that template folder, or you can make it inside of the app folder. So inside of the app folder, we can do templates, and inside of templates, we can make another folder called products and another file in there called list.html. So we've got products list.html, much like here. So it's actually there. Refresh in here. Oh, let's make sure we save everything. Blank page. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and do that same thing with this. I'm going to just get rid of that one and go to the product list view or products FBV. Okay, so the function-based view, let's switch gears here a little bit. We already know what the context is. The product list view, I do not know what the context is. So on this, I can grab, let's just change this real quick to QS. So I know that the context object is QS. So inside of here, I can say QS. I refresh, what do you know? There's a query set. If I go to the products list, I don't see it, right? So the class-based view doesn't show it, but the function-based view does. Now, how do you actually understand what context is coming through on any given class-based view, right? So it's missing, it's not showing there. I'm gonna go ahead and say define get context data, takes in self, and we're gonna also add in something called args and keyword args. And I'll say context equals to super. So I'm gonna write this out first and then we'll talk about it. And then we'll go get context data, args, and keyword args, and it's gonna return context. So every single class-based view has this method. And what this method does is it gets the context for any given query set or whatever view is being done. So this, is, this happens by default. It's very similar to us writing our own context out, but since we don't wanna repeat ourselves, what generic views do, or like class-based views do, is they remove that repetitiveness of everything, right? So I just wrote out get context data so we can see it, that's it. And I'm gonna go ahead and print out context. If you don't know what args and keyword args are, I definitely recommend looking them up, but basically this holds in every argument that you might have. So if I, for some reason, called get context data ABC, one, two, three, da, 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 that would handle all of those. And then keyword args would be another equals to ABC, uh, ABC equals the one, two, three, and so on. Um, that would handle all of those. That is, I didn't explicitly write out any of these things in here. I just wrote out self, which relates to the instance. Okay, so we now have a way to get our context or see what our context is inside of this generic view. So let's go ahead and look at our generic view. I refresh in here, look at my terminal, what do you know? So I have a few things in here. I've got paginator, page object. We've got none on both of those. Is paginated, false. Object list, uh-oh, object list. There is some product or query set related stuff. And then product list, and then finally view. So it gives us literally all the context that is being passed 
to our template. So let's go ahead and just copy that. I'm literally gonna copy this entire dictionary just to make it nice and easy on you. Paste it in here and we will show this, but we'll also work with this. Okay, just separating things out a little bit. So I can say paginator. I can say is paginated. I can say object list and I can keep going. Object list is the one we want, but we'll come back. I refresh in here and now what I see is this is that first thing that I did and then none is being related to paginator, false is related to is paginated and then we've got our query set just like the FBV. So FBV, this is gonna have all that other stuff too because we actually paste it in, but that's our query set. So the actual context object that we wanna use is object list. And in our views, we would, we can totally get rid of this now. I'll just comment it out. And we would change this to object list. These are now back to being exactly the same. So I refresh in products FPV as well as just products. We see that they are 100% the same. Now we wanna list these things out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do four OBJ in OBJ our object list as in for object in object list. We're just gonna say obj.title and I'll add a break tag here. We save that. Refresh in here, I've got my t-shirt. I'm actually gonna get rid of that first object list portion. We refresh in here, we've got t-shirt. Let's just jump into the admin and add another one so we can see that it actually works. We'll say hat, this is my hat. We save it, go back into products. Boom, t-shirt, hat. It is working. We've got our list for you. In the next one, we will talk about seeing these individual items. Stay with us.